Live from the San Jose Convention Center, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering Hadoop Summit 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsor, Hortonworks, and by EMC, Pivotal, IBM, Pentaho, Teradata, SyncSort, and by Attunity. When Disco, now your host, John Furrier. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are back here at Hadoop Summit 2015, live in Silicon Valley. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, founder of SiliconANGLE. I got my two guests here, Rishi Yadav, CEO of InfoObjects. Welcome back to theCUBE again. Thank and you. we have Juan Asenho, lead technology architect, Rockwell Automation. Guys, welcome to theCUBE. Nice to meet you. Thanks for coming on. Great to see you again, InfoObjects. Business is good. Last year in theCUBE, uh, you said, Spark was going to be big. Hey, it's big, it's Spark Summit's next week. What's going on? Give us a quick update on info objects, then we'll talk about what you guys are doing with some of your customers. Yeah, so Spark, uh, Spark has been a blessing as we talked a few months back also. Uh, so the whole, the whole uh, big data ecosystem has stabilized a lot. And uh, whether it's HDFS, whether it's Spark, or whether it's Cassandra, so now it's more like even clients are very knowledgeable, they know what uh, they are looking for, right? So that kind of makes it easy. The place where they get uh, confused is all these distributions. I remember when two years back, uh, uh, when we were at, at Strata, and uh, I think uh, an hour before our, uh, our uh, before my interview, uh, the Intel had a distribution, and our point was that how many distributions this planet needs. Right. So now the number of distributions are far less than what they were uh, two years back, but still, it uh, sometimes it becomes confusing enough for the clients. So and that's where we come into the picture, right? We uh, come as a vendor neutral uh, partner to our clients, so we are on our uh, client side as opposed to any spe uh, specific Hadoop vendor side, right? And then we sit with the client, we understand their requirements, and then we. Yeah. Suggest them that what exactly is going to work for them. What is, what is best for them uh, out of uh, out of all the uh, all the different distributions and the open source versions, which is a big yeah. thing out there. I'd like to get Juan's perspective on this, but before I go to Juan, I want to ask you a question because earlier today we had an interview with uh, Pivotal and EMC, and it came out in, a, in other interviews as well. But really, that was the highlight was the whole consumerization thing of IT. That's now digital transformation. One, two. It's a services-led market right now because there's so much technology out there that the bridge to the future has to be built. <laughs> right? You got to have one side of the bridge, and then you got to have a partner to go with. So, so that's be, that's kind of we've talked about that in the past. But the word future-proof is back. Future-proof is back. It's a word that has been around for a while. That means you know lock-in or hey whatever. But there's real issues now. Future-proof is a real deal. So I got I got to ask you at your in your in your role with customers. Is that part of the deal? What are you guys doing to, to be that partner? Because being vendor neutral means you, you're certainly making a decision. You're partnering with the customer. That's a services led approach. But there's still technology to construct that bridge to the future and still maintain the future proofing. So explain that how you guys fit into that paradigm. Actually, it's a very good question, and what has happened with the open source is, right, now whether it's uh, uh, Hortonworks distribution or it's uh, Cloudera distribution, they are going to use the same open source version of Hadoop, and then they added a lot of extra value added features onto that, right? So the idea is that uh, in the future, no matter what happens to these companies or any other uh, uh, distributions, right, the pure open source will remain there, right? I mean, uh, there are a lot of companies like us who understand open source, so tomorrow if any issue comes, you're not really stuck to any specific vendor, right, because the base is same, and which is open to everyone, right, everybody can look at the code base, everybody can improve to the code base, everybody can contribute to the code base. So in fact, uh, the open source uh, movement has taken the future proofing, as you said, uh, to a completely new, uh, completely new level. So Juan, talk about the relationship, and how did you guys pick info objects what, what's going on in your world? What was happening? What made you say, hey, I got to do stuff? Mm -hmm. Was it gun to your head from the boss? Was it the infrastructure? Was it everything? I mean, what was the pressure points that made you guys look at quickly accelerating into the future? Mm -hmm. The rationale behind that is uh, we have a, a strong relationship with many, one of main vendors like Microsoft, and uh, but it's allowed uh, uh, 
technology and a lot of moving parts. And uh, uh, so uh, when, when, we, when you come to picking technology and, and integrating the technology, you can't really have all the team yourself, and so you need help, and you, you have to find a company that uh, bring all those elements together, and that's the reason uh, we approach uh, What did those guys do with you? They, did, did they help you with the technology? Did they yeah, do they, the bake-off? They help with the uh, understanding the, the, the for, for our use cases. Uh, if you look at, you talk to any of the vendors on the big data and analytics, uh, you, you, you may be confused because uh, which one I pick? And uh, so we need to really understand our use case and, and pick the one that's, uh, as you just said, future proof, yeah. uh, cost effective, <laughs> and uh, you, you can't really do with the resources that we have. And most, I, I would say probably we're in the same boat with many companies. Yeah. And we have to augment our capacity by going through a consultant that have experience with these uh, topics. What was the big factor for deciding info objects? Vendor neutral, domain expertise, yeah, uh, I would all say, the above? I would say all of the above, but mostly the domain expertise. Uh, so I've been very impressed with the, their capabilities, and uh, especially Richie is himself is a source of knowledge, and uh, yeah. uh, that's he the is. reason uh, uh, that uh, we, we, we like So Richie, so when, what happens? Take us to how this all works out with customers. Tell us how they engage, how they engage with you, and what is the relationship, what do you guys do, uh, what do they do, what do you don't do? Take yeah. us through that. <coughs> So it's interesting, uh, in fact I was talking to someone a few days back and I was telling that it looks that uh, we are into the content business, right? Uh, on our website, uh, three-fourths of the hits uh, are about the kind of content we have about Spark, different Spark recipes, and now my book is coming out uh, in less than a month, right? So what's attracting uh, uh, the uh, uh, future pros uh, prospects and the, and the future customers is uh, the content, the, the content which we are making it our, available on our website, the content we are uh, making available through Cube and, uh, and other channels, right? So that kind of makes them interested that okay, this company definitely has a knowledge, and and then then they uh, they uh, they reach out to us and then engage, and then obviously the kind of uh, depth of knowledge as well as breadth of experience. Right, I think both helps. I think the one advantage of engaging a consulting company, even as compared to hiring full-time staff is this, that a consulting company, the problem you are trying to solve, right, they've already solved or they're trying to solve with five or 10 other clients, right? So the overall time gets accelerated, right? In yeah. some cases it can be half the time, in some cases it could be one-tenth of the time, some, sometimes it can be one-fourth of the time, but that extra, that additional mileage you get, and company, a lot of companies are not into the business of building software anyway, right? I mean, the companies like Rockwell, uh, one of the biggest uh, industrial automation company in the world, right? They are they are into the business of industrial automation, right? They are not into the business of making how to make Spark uh, most optim uh, optimized or how to make Hadoop most They just want optimizer. results. Exactly. They don't want, so you want, they want you to pick the tech. Exactly. They don't want, you guys want results. You have business objectives, right? Exactly, so we have uh, a market to uh, uh, <coughs> serve, and uh, if we are worried about the building the queries in uh, uh, Hadoop or uh, putting everything together, it will take a lot longer to, yeah. uh, and technology is moving so quickly, so something that you master today is uh, probably obsolete. <laughs> so. so where are you with the, with the relationship? You guys deployed software, you guys working? The products out there, the outcomes coming in. Did you get what you? What we're you in wanted? the process of evaluating what is the best technology for our use cases. Uh, we're in the industrial IoT uh, business, as mm -hmm. with Rockwell, uh, remote monitoring IoT, and uh, uh, from the data ingestion to the platform that does the analytics and uh, number crunching. That's what the uh, we we we, we so leverage. Is the solution uh, up and running right now? We, we have parts and pieces okay. up and running. Uh, so what the Info object uh, expertise bring to the table is the uh, that uh, expertise on the big data analytics that yeah. we don't have. This is the Internet of Things. It's the Internet of Things. Internet Industrial of things. Internet of Things. Industrial, it's uh, GE. With that. Well, that's GE. They're trying to co-opt that, but General Electric also has the same mindset. Rishi, explain what's going on for the world out there. It's a hot buzzword, Internet of Things. Industrial as well. Running equipment. This is a hot area. What's going on? What are these guys doing? What did you guys do to help? What's the key technologies? What was the building blocks? Because it's there's some stuff out there, but if you pick something that's not baked, it could come back to bite you. So how did you make that selection of technology? So uh, so it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting because the internet of things, the whole IoT, 
actually that's the upstream system to big data right so as uh, as you see uh, more and more uh, uh, movement in iot you will see multiple times movement uh, in big data right because iot is actually creating data yeah. and at present there are a lot of sources of big data uh, but the biggest source uh, uh, going uh, is going to be the sensor data because iot if you talk yeah. about most of the iot is about the sensor data right and that's the reason a lot of technology even in big data, data space for example kafka right kafka is a technology in which you can do real time streaming right now because iot is picking up the sensor data is picking up so clients are showing a special interest in kafka right which was not needed uh, in the whole batch oriented world maybe a couple of years back yeah. right so all right well what's what's next what's next for the this relationship where do you go next i oh, so you got to get things deployed got to get the results in and then it sounds like there'll be more work what, how do you expand, what's, what's the relationship go from there? What do you guys do next? Yeah, what, what we do next is uh, we have uh, some uh, proof of concept that we need to execute to, to select the right technology. And uh, sometimes it's, it's even difficult for us to figure out what, what our use cases are because uh, when, you, when you just uh, said the future proof, sometimes you don't, you, don't, you don't know that your future cases in the future, but you have to plan as much as possible for yeah. that. And, uh, That's hard. And picking technology, really, you're making a, and big data, you're making a big commitment because of the yeah. uh, if you invest in this with this vendor, uh, and uh, you don't know if it, that vendor will be available in the future, correct? And yeah. uh, and uh, so uh, being as open source and open minded as possible, but getting the job done. So that's the reason. Uh, it's a good. Well, these guys will be around. They got a good business. <laughs> <laughs> and they got smart people, so I mean, you guys are going to do good. Infoblog is solid, but no, I mean, I mean, the, I'm not, I'm not mean Infoblog. I mean, the, what technology you pick? Yeah, yeah. So it's like, like look at Storm. Look. We were just talking about it earlier. Storm was hot. Now Spark. So, you know, I mean, things are happening. Yeah. Some things can come and go, like flavors. My part is uh, my reviews is a uh, uh, thing of the past. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we just talked about Databricks earlier, and they're, you know, they run on Hadoop. There's a, maybe if they, that's all cloud. Now, what do they want to go on prem? You know, so interesting dynamics, right? So, okay, so Rishi, I got to get your take on this because we've been looking back past couple of years. What is your message to the folks watching? As Hadoop, Merv, Adrian, just from Garden, just said, and I agree, this is going mainstream right now. So the language of mainstream is not speeds and feeds or MapReduce or Spark. It's, I have to automate this analytic process and create a product that we're selling and or value. So the value equation is huge. Time to value becomes the number one criteria. So what's your take on this? How, how would you share, or with being in the inside of the industry, the folks watching, that's this new transition of the industry? Yes, yeah, so uh, uh, two years back, or even up to one year back, uh, uh, we had to explain to our clients that why do they need a data lake or enterprise data hub, as Cloudera likes to call it, right? Now that problem is solved. When uh, prospects uh, come to us, they say that, Rishi, I understand that I need to have one big uh, data lake in the company. Now tell me that I have the disparate data sources, right? Can I get the right connectors for it, right? So the first part is already So I've got to write more software. Right, mm. or, 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 or use already built connectors, <laughs> yeah, right? Okay, yeah, so, so, yeah. so that problem is solved, right? Yeah. Now the next problem they have is, they say that can I do all compute on this one platform, I mean, is it what it's pro it's been promised yeah. to do, right? I mean, especially yeah. with the Spark, yeah. right? And, or maybe Cloudera Impala for uh, distributed query processing, right? I mean, can I really, whatever uh, is advertised that I have this one big data lake and uh, I can get all the analytics from there, is it really possible? Some of them say, what about my visualization tools, right? And the kind of visualization which I, which I can do with the OLTP sources, can I get the same visualization? Right? Can I get the same real-time performance? And can you also make sure that my bad jobs, they would not get affected by it, right? So all these kind of issues, but the question, the point is that no convincing is needed now, right? Now yeah. clients are already convinced. Now they are saying that, tell me that whatever I want can really be done or not, right? Because we need somebody so who has done it in the So definitely you agree, consultative help right now is mandatory. Two, we also hear about reference architectures. What are you hearing on that? Is there certain reference architectures that help people get the data lake going? Is there certain things that work well that you've seen out there? Is there certain playbooks? So, playbooks have been more uh, 
client need specific. Yeah. I don't think the whole big data thing has evolved to a stage where you know that uh, th this building block will go here and you that. You can't cookie cutter or boilerplate it over. It's pretty much you got to go in and do some assessment. Yeah, so we have to saying? do some assessment based on their needs. And, and as, as I said, and now if you talk to different vendors, I mean they would say that uh, my playbook is the right playbook, right? And that's where we, as a vendor neutral partner, uh, come to the picture that we look at the client's needs and we say, you know what, probably this much you can use with a pure open source and maybe this piece you can pick from that this vendor and that piece you can pick from that vendor and that is going to make your solution perfect. Okay, guys, I really appreciate you taking the time to come on theCUBE, we'll give you the final word. Uh, tell us what's going on in your world prediction here for this industry, this next year. I think, uh, uh, I mean, uh, in our case, uh, as I said, uh, uh, Spark has been a blessing and Spark along with HDFS, uh, uh, I think that's going to be continuing with, uh, in the trend. The other thing which I see is that, uh, uh, we covered it in the last interview, the old world ETL versus the yeah. machine learning. Yeah. Now I see more and more use cases of machine learning coming up. Uh, Spark has really evolved a lot. It has, uh, it's a machine learning library is becoming richer and richer. But interestingly now, clients are talking about machine learning because mostly whenever clients talk about it, they talk about SQL. And they are still talking about SQL 90% of the time, but the 10% of the time they are talking about machine learning, which which is which is an interesting trend because it means they are using these technologies not just to do the old workflows, but they are they are also uh, doing it for finding new in, new insights, which is the promise of big data technologies. Juan, what's your assessment and prediction for the future of this <clears throat> industry? No, that's a tough question. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can only say, for my perspective from uh, my company, Rockwell Automation, uh, is. Um, uh, all these uh, technologies are relevant to what we do, and I think it's relevant to every company. Uh, essentially, we are in the industrial uh, IoT, uh, and uh, and some of these terms are kind of uh, overloaded. I guess uh, what is what is analytics? Uh, what is big data? And uh, it's, a, it's a number of things that you can do with analytics and different tools. And and, and I think uh, we we are investing on uh, learning more and more how we can differentiate ourselves, uh, bringing value to our customers by leveraging tools. Uh, and maybe no one vendor has all the tools, so you have to yeah. mix and match uh, multiple vendors. And that's, I see the relation, a strong relationship going with the consultant That's a mainstream, company. what Merv Adrian just described as a mainstream need. I have needs, I don't care about the vendor. Yeah. <laughs> I got to mix and match whatever fits the bill. Exactly, and, and uh, with the technology and, and uh, knowledge, I guess yeah. uh, we can uh, achieve those uh, Within the, the, if we talk next year, I guess maybe we will accomplish some of those goals. We'll do an audit and see how things have gone for last year. Rishi Wan, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate sharing your insights and expertise. This is theCUBE live at Hadoop Summit 2015. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. <laughs>